Keeping with the theme of consoles for December, so obviously we have the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, but what if I do not want any of these consoles? I think that they are too console plebeian and I'm a PC master race person. Here we go. A PC that is equivalent to both of these consoles in terms of specs. And this is the Cooler Master NR200 case. Look at the size of them. Look at this. This is the Cooler Master NR200. This is the Xbox Series X. It is, I guess, half the size of the Xbox Series X but it is actually shorter than it. So if I were just to put it like that, it is almost similar height, but it is a little bit shorter than the Series X actually. And obviously the PlayStation 5, I mean, it's half the size of it. So if you probably buy the PlayStation 5, you would not feel that this is large. But yes, this PC case, it is amazing to build in and it is also pretty small and it you can actually put in a lot of stuff in it. So let's just take a look at the internal specs and I'll explain why I chose some certain parts in it. Okay, I'm going to turn this on first. And... Hang on, that's not thing. Yes, there we go. Ah, <laughs> this case is actually pretty easy to open as well. Excuse the mess of wires because I haven't had time to cable manage, but there we go. The case itself is actually pretty good because you can put so much stuff in it and there is still so much space. I have not put fans here but you can see there's enough space for fans at the bottom and also there's enough space for another fan here. So this is actually a very very good case. So what we have in the PC right now is a Ryzen 7 3800 XT which is an 8 core 16 thread Zen 2 CPU. So technically it is the equivalent to the Zen 2 CPUs in the console. We have 16GB of RAM, which is also the same amount of RAM that the consoles have. And also a RX 6800, not XT, 6800 because this is the lowest RDNA 2 GPU that we have that is also present in the current gen consoles. And if you want to talk about SSD and stuff and all that, I mean, it is not really PCIe 4.0, but on a PC, it technically is good enough. Now the reason why I chose the 3800 XT is because, frankly speaking, the 3700Xs are all sold out everywhere because of high demand. And since we are going to use this computer to play 4K games, the processor probably wouldn't matter that much. Technically, we will test out how the 6800 will perform on a 4K gaming setup in this kind of size because we will want to try and keep it as small as the current gen consoles. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you want to use this as a console, you still got to get a mouse and keyboard to operate the windows and all that stuff. But let's say if you get a wireless mouse and keyboard because it's available pretty much everywhere these days, you can actually just use your mouse and keyboard and just sit back on the couch and relax and play. And if you do not want to use a controller, you can use that those stuff to play games. So right now I'm playing Warzone in 4K. Hopefully it sticks around 60 FPS. Right now it's dropping to about 50. Ray tracing on by the way, and fully max settings. But the game looks beautiful. It really feels like I'm playing on an Xbox or a PS5. Okay, now the gameplay has started. Uh, the FPS is dropping to about, it's not, not dropping, it's about 90 FPS with ray tracing on at 4K. So I think it is really on par with the consoles for now. Gameplay feels absolutely smooth and fluid. And the graphics look amazing. My gosh, 4K, 4K gaming is really slowly becoming a reality. God damn, man. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> The gameplay feels absolutely fluid with the 6800 and it doesn't seem like there is a lot of frame drops and... Wait, let me just kill this guy. No... Hey, oh my gosh. I am not used to playing first-person shooters with a controller, so... Excuse my sh gaming. Oh sh come on, Steven. God damn it. 
Yes, there we go. And my mouse and keyboard player, so... <laughs> so now with Warzone out of the way, I think the game looks pretty good with the 6800. I don't think you need the 6800 XT to play this at 60 FPS on a 4K TV. So let's try another game which is available also on the Xbox or the PlayStation 5, which is Dirt 5. It is a driving game, so it's pretty fast paced and see how it performs on a 4K setting. So after playing Warzone, the PC actually doesn't feel that hot, if I'm not mistaken. Just let me take a look at the heat while the game was running. It's really small, by the way. 77? 78? While there are no fans directed at the, C at the GPU, by the way. So that is really, really commendable. If you have like a fan that's blowing up, into the GPU itself, it probably will be less than 70, which is actually pretty good for a modern day GPU. And now we are going to play Dirt 5. It is a game that is available on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X as well. So we are actually going to see how well it performs in when you compare it to the consoles. As you can see, the graphics are already pretty okay, to be very frank. And hopefully I can talk and play at the same time, but... It feels so much smoother at 4K on the 6800 than the PlayStation and the Xbox actually. It doesn't feel like there's frame drops. Okay, okay there, are, there is a few frame drops but not as much. When it gets into like a lot of like this water puddles, then it becomes super stuttery. But I don't think it's at an unplayable frame rate. But the game still looks extremely beautiful, so I guess the 6800 is actually doing an okay job. And I must say, it probably is better than the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. Because on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, in this super high resolution with this kind of settings, it actually drops till about 45 FPS rather than it staying at a constant 60 like this. Okay, I actually can't play and talk at the same time, so I think I'm just gonna end the <laughs> play session here. But you all just need to know that it performs admirably well. And there you go, if you get the Radeon RX 6800, you can pretty much play a lot of games at 4K at 60 frames per second. But is it a smart thing to do so to buy something with all of these specs just to play games on your 4K TV? Well, to be very frank, the Radeon RX 6800 is 579 US dollars, while the consoles are only 499 US dollars. Now, you get a full console system for that price and you don't need to buy anything else with the exception of controllers and stuff like that, but if you want to buy something like this, you gotta get the graphics card, you gotta get the CPU, your case, your power supply, whatsoever, and it will probably add up to about a thousand over dollars. Now, with that said, if you do want to buy something like this for an all around PC, it is actually a really, really good choice because take something like this case. This is the Cooler Master NR200 and look at the amount of space such a small case has. You probably can fit like a better tower cooler inside of this case because look at the amount of space. There's still a lot of space in between this AMD cooler and the front panel. And the fact that you can put a 3 fan GPU inside of this case and still get pretty good thermal performance, this case is actually pretty damn good. So if you want to get a PC that matches the size of the current gen consoles, this is the case to get. It is actually pretty light as well with all the components inside and I wouldn't say it's much heavier than the PS5 itself. You can put this in your cabinet and you can also put it in very tight spaces as long as there's enough cooling, this case can handle it no sweat. Now if you do want to pull the trigger to get this kind of setup, obviously you got to figure out what you need it for. If you are someone who plays games and also does some work on your 4K TV, this is a pretty good choice. As far as performance is concerned with all the PC parts that I have in this case right now, it is actually a pretty good PC. I think you can even downgrade the CPU to about maybe a 3600X and still get comparable performance as long as you get a good 
current gen graphics card. To be very frank, if you do not want to go team red for your GPU, you can still get the RTX 3070 which performs similarly to the 6800 and it will pretty much do a lot of games at 4K 60fps as well. Or if you do not want to get any of those, you can spend your money on buying a cat. Oh my gosh, you're struggling, 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 struggling! <laughs> so back to the console-like PC case, I think this is a very good case. And if you're not someone who is interested to build your own computers, you can actually find this with Dreamcore. Dreamcore actually sells their small form factor PCs that uses this case. And I think you can customize whatever you want in them. They will probably meet your demands. Even if you want to put in like a 3090, I think they will find a way to do so. And I'm pretty sure if you request for like a 16 core, 32 thread CPU, they will also just shove it in and make sure there's adequate cooling for it. And I guess really the best part about this is that it is not much bigger than the consoles. I keep saying that in the whole entire video because that is really the point of the video. So I guess the point of this video is that if you want to have a PC that rivals the size of the consoles or maybe even rival the specs of the consoles, you can do so. It'll be slightly more expensive, but the size is definitely doable and you won't compromise much actually because the heat dissipation from this case is amazing. So that's all for this edition of Ytech. This episode was supposed to be one of those episodes where I just shove in all the relevant specs of the consoles into a small little PC case and see whether it functions as good as the consoles it does and also it probably does a bit more. So now you know, now I know too and I actually don't have much more to say about this PC case. It's good, go out and buy it. And if you don't want to build it yourself, you can look for Dreamcore because they use the same case. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.